A few years ago, I was walking past a graveyard late at night. I heard a voice call my name and turned to find a man beckoning to me from among the gravestones. Without thinking, I walked to where he stood. He had an old leather case in his hands. I could see it clearly in the light that fell from the street lamp some several yards behind me. He extended it to me and said, Here, this is yours from another time. I took it without thinking as the man turned without further comment and began to walk away into the darkness. Wait, I cried. What is this? Where are you going? I, I, I don't understand. He turned and smiled at me. We will talk again, he said. Then he was gone. Upon reaching my destination, I opened the case and there found a large collection of vellum parchment inscribed upon in a spidery hand. Reading the text, it became clear to me that these were plays. At some point in my reading, I saw the name William Shakespeare signed at the bottom of a page. I cannot express the impact of the shudder that passed through my frame. I have taken some soliloquies from among these plays, of which there are five, some complete, but most not. In all, there are twelve pieces. I have no knowledge of whether this is real or some sort of hoax. Time will surely tell. The Lost Soliloquies of Shakespeare From the play Arthur Pendragon, Act 4, Scene 5 Merlin, after learning that he will now sleep for 800 years. Methinks she has dined on scorpions and must drink blood by violence spilled into cups of treacherous thought. They hold their form but a moment and then dissolve with all remembrance into the bottomless stem. What dark and disturbed kin to love is this? Affection of a sort even base desire of simple love malformed does motivate us all. To what dread understanding has she come that the thought of such deeds does inspire the act and can still laugh and speak and live outwardly, it seems, like anyone. I have watched her face in sleep. No trouble nor horror there are sketched, save for her beauty, ordinary as all the rest. If I live a thousand years, I will never understand this masquerade that gives to evil such a pretty face like sculptured milk and roses flowing into fulsome grace. The world has many dangers. They await at every turn, but none there are so deadly as the awful pit which yawns behind this woman's eyes.